three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Ha Good evening. My name is, uh, I forgot my name. My name is Renier. Uh, with me is David Flood back once again, just like last week, back in the Geeks Reviews, Geeks Reborn podcast. I think I nailed that better than last week. <laughs> no, you did. You did well. You did well. <laughs> Even though I forgot my name. You forgot your name, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's all good. I I was straight up. I was just like, what? I was like, what? <laughs> what was oh, what? But anyway, so he's back again because last week we did the uh, WrestleMania predictions and we talked about a little bit of stuff, but it was mainly about. The WrestleMania uh, show. So overall, what did you think about it? Well, I mean, night one was great. That oh yeah, it really showed out. I was completely wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, that that was a I, like you said. I thought Damian Priest will take up like the matchup. I thought the Miz will be. I mean, John Morrison and the Miz made Bad Bunny look like hundreds of millions of bucks. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, though, dude, like, you could see that he put in a lot of work. That, too. I was not expecting it. Yeah. I'm, I will admit that I was completely wrong about mm -hmm. that. Because, he, I mean... I, was, I, I thought so, too. I thought, it, like, you know, most of the ex, uh, celebrity matches, it's usually, here's a couple punches, here's uh, the character's finisher, and that's mm -hmm. it for them. Mm -hmm. But with Bad Bunny, you know, f a full... Like, he went out. He was like, hey, Damien, put me in instead. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to fight The Miz. And he did. Yep. And, and he did I, a damn good job. I mean, even The Miz came out on Instagram and was, like, giving him his props. So yeah, dude. For, that the, was, for The Miz to do that, it's... Oh, crazy. I agree. He yeah. really worked hard, you know? Yeah. So it, was a, it was a pleasant surprise, for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else did you think? I thought the McIntyre-Lashley match was good. Oh, it was a great heavyweight match, man. Yes, like, two great. Like, two monsters. Mm-hmm. And at any point, you didn't know who was going to win at some points. You know, yeah, they were doing points, a lot of false... Yeah, I agree. The false finishes, yeah. Mm -hmm. False finishes so that, left that and right. Great. And then, of course, you know, Sasha Banks versus Bianca Bella. Oh, was that fantastic. was fantastic. Yes, I agree. I was, my buddies and I were just watching and we were like, no way. And there was I mean, honestly, dude, night one all across the board was just well, great. So, night one, except I, I want to just say... For the turmoil, turmoil match. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, I was expecting uh, the riot squad actually. Yeah, I mean. I was surprised that they didn't I, get to go I forward, that but Tamina and Natalia were gonna win that. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I thought, but yeah, wrong, so, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I was ho I was hoping for it. I I thought they were gonna change up the tag team division. I was like, oh please. Please let them lose. I just yeah. I want a good. Mm -hmm. I, I I I thought a a great a storyline could develop between Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Like I think you mentioned that here on your prediction. Mm -hmm. Like they will split, and then that's where the feud start. Um, out of the turmoil, uh, out of the sh matches in the first night, I thought outside of the turmoil match, the my least favorite one was the steel cage match. Other than Braun. Breaking the bar the steel, you know, and you know Shane having his WrestleMania moments, you know, I thought it was just like uh, it's 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 a steel well, cage match. We actually disagree because I thought that match was freaking awesome. Really? Because, because it's a far cry. I mean, typically they make Braun look like an idiot. You know, that's true. And, and he just and yeah, they had you know uh, Riker and Elias attack him at the beginning of the mm -hmm. match, but that just made him look stronger. And that's he true. Just, and also, too, one thing I liked, and this this is they finally took his damn shirt off and let him wrestle without a shirt because the dude is jacked. <laughs> yeah, that's he true. He never been wearing a shirt to begin with. Okay. Yeah, he looks uncomfortable so, with it. Not gonna lie. I like. See, and the thing the thing is too is I didn't really like the tag team match between Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston and yeah, AJ Styles I, and almost. I I didn't think almost um, compared to uh, Bad Bunny. Of course, there's size difference as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that almost. Uh, Almost acted, in my opinion, acted like the great Kali. 
yes, slow. And you can't stop smiling either. Yeah, right? that was weird. He's a heel. He's a heel. Yeah, He's not supposed to smile. That was weird. I, mm-hmm. I, would, I would be honest with that one. That was really weird. I was like, why is this guy smiling the entire time? Mm-hmm. Like, sure, I you're the giant. Of course, you're going to be, like, cocky and stuff. But smiling the entire I was like, eh. And it wasn't a cocky smile. It was almost like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, oh, like oh, this. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. no, no. Yeah, so Not like that it. just that didn't sit well with me, and I felt like they could have finally did something, you know, to split up Kofi and Xavier because that's, oh, yeah, that's just true. on its course. It's just it is. I would just say that I did miss um, a Big E's entrance for the new day. That was pretty cool, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. I, I love the energy, but mm-hmm. like I said, I missed it. I remember watching one WrestleMania, and I was just like, Big E's entrance is amazing. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> But yeah, like mm. you said, um, I th- yeah that would have been a great uh, turning point for them. I thought they were gonna do it, like I said earlier. I thought they're gonna do that with the tag team women's champs. But also, uh, is the tag team's women's champ all across the three brands? Yes, it's NXT, uh, Raw, SmackDown, even NXT UK if they wanted to. So oh, okay, I thought it was like there was a. I remember there was one for Raw and SmackDown, mm-hmm. and then there was the NXT. Then I thought the NXT was uh, Shayna Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, but I was surprised that it was a unified tag, well, women's tag team championship. Yeah, and I, you know, I I don't think that they've gotten an NXT women's champ uh, title. Oh, tag really? Titles yet. I don't. Oh well, you know what? I think it's because of the design that I yeah. like the current design that I thought mm-hmm. was from NXT. Okay. Right. Yeah, but no, I mean I like those belts and. While we're on the topic of belts, I think that the Intercontinental Championship should have gone back, like stayed with the white belt. The, the oh United. yes, yes, yeah, that's yes. I, I thought it was always cool too. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the yeah, new one is just too busy. You know, mm-hmm. it's just yeah. Then but, the you know the WWE Champion and the Universal Championship. You know, it's super bland. Literally the same design, different color. Sure, why not? But yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know what's funny is I was watching. It was a couple weeks ago, and it was either on Raw or SmackDown. But oh, it was Raw because it was U.S. title, mm-hmm. and Matthew R- Matt Riddle was holding it, and you could see the WWE sticker, like the replica sticker on the back of the title. <laughs> you know, like the the WWE authentic like silver sticker. No, I, and I thought that was hilarious because it's like, aren't you all supposed to take that off? It's not supposed to be known. It's a replica. You know, <laughs> like I, it's it's like that one time I remember watching and like hearing about um, Brock. Uh, I forgot if he lost the belt or forgot it somewhere, but they had to give him a toy replica. Mm-hmm. And everyone That's noticed. That's happened a couple times. Yeah. I think that even happened to Chris. You remember when Chris Jericho won the AEW title and he lost it in the airport? Uh, I Oh, was it lost? I thought uh, someone got mm-hmm. someone it, stole it. Someone stole it, but I mean, that's still lost. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's happened. That's true. It will happen if you yeah. take care of it. Yeah, know? especially, you know, flying around left and right. Especially baggage claim. <laughs> Someone oh, opens yeah. it. I was like, AEW, oh my god, I have a championship belt. It's like authentic and everything. Mm-hmm. Sells it online for like probably thousands of bucks. For mm-hmm. a couple of hundred. Several hundred, right. actually. I won't, <laughs> I won't sell that for like 200. I'm like, yo, yo, authentic uh, championship belt from your favorite uh, brand or whatever. <laughs> here's a here's a you know just you know you can have it you know here's the name Chris Jericho. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, no more AEW talk. <laughs> yeah, back to WWE because that's the only show we both watch. Yep, I tried to watch Impact or slash TNA back then, and I was just like, eh, production value wasn't the same. Oh no, yeah, no. Even oh. with AEW, the production value is not the same. So. So here we go. Since we're talking about N- uh, WWO, uh, WWO. Well, here comes the segment, I guess. The, since we're talking about the WrestleMania and the uh, NWO mm-hmm. being uh, uh, inducted again, with Hulk Hogan being Hall of Famer three times now, I think. And uh, I saw a guy. I went to a comic book shop, local one, and this guy had an NW mask. I was like, hell yeah, brother, I like that I like that mask you got there. I was like, yep, one and only. Yes, one and only. Did you too sweet him? Too sweet. Too sweet. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, I, I don't watch WCW. I haven't. I never watched WCW, but watching the Mon- Monday Night Raw, 
I mean Monday Night War and documentary. Mm-hmm. I was like, res- I, I, that was a great reveal, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Dude, the best heel yeah. ever. Yeah. E- exactly. One of the best superstars becomes a bad guy. And then like, quickly okay. downhill. It was like heel turn, then downhill. Yeah. With Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He got, it was very repetitive. And mm-hmm. They had a lot, way, way too much pull backstage, so they just look. They wanted to make themselves look like the best, and then they, then you had the Wolf Pack, and mm-hmm. like, then all of a sudden, it's like a Marvel movies, you know, everyone's an Avenger, but this time it's everyone's an NWO. Yeah, it was almost like Avengers versus like DC. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, that's like what it would have been. Yeah. yeah, I remember um, someone. Uh, I was going like back to the comic book stuff. Someone mentioned it was like. Man, everyone's in Marvel is an Avenger now. It's like it's a new world order, and everyone's supposed to NWO. That's how you know how much of an impact that that faction had for a long right. while. But like no, you said, you know, it sucks that they had way too much power, and Eric Bischoff was like, "Let's beat WWF." Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's Ran pretty much into bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. So you know. Then, you know, after he left, it's, uh, that was sad. It was just sad, throughout, like, watching Monday Night War. I was just like, mm-hmm. you you kind of served this. You banked on the NWO completely. But anyway, you know, history with the NWO. <laughs> Race it. <laughs> Couple of way too many minutes on that one. What did you think about the Cicero, uh seth Rollins fight? It was a great match. I Very agree. good. And I agree. Seth, I mean, Seth Rollins is probably... One of the best, like, actual technical wrestlers in WWE. Uh-oh. So, him Aha. against Cesaro, Cesaro, yeah. Cesaro, as he calls him, you know, it was it was a great match. The and man with it, many names. If it wasn't for, you know, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair and Lashley versus McIntyre, it would have been the match of the night. Yeah. Because you know, just the yeah. story and seeing uh, Cesaro finally get his WrestleMania moment after, like, fuck, dude, like 20 years of, like, grinding and not really? being noticed. Really? Dude, he has been going at it for a long time. He was he was another one I think that was in Ring of Honor. Oh, okay, and, okay. Uh, I was about to say name I... was, his name was Claudio Castagnoli or something uh, like that. That's like his real his real name. Okay. But no, he's been wrestling for a really long time. Okay. And finally when get when that did moment. he join when did he get uh, uh, signed on WWE? I am not sure. I know it was probably it was during NXT when it was first like an actual promotion. Hmm. So it was probably like early 2010s, maybe. You know, somewhere around there. He's been going in WWE okay. for about eight, eight years, five wow. years, somewhere around. Not there. gonna lie, you know, rewatching uh, WWE, like seeing The Miz. You know, before I stopped watching WWE, took a break from it like for ten plus years. The Miz just started, and he's mm-hmm. still going. I think and going strong too. Oh yeah, same. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Then Dolph Ziggler was a brand new face, mm-hmm. a brand new star in WWE. I was like, oh, okay. And you know what? You know, he, apparently he became a champion. <laughs> that was surprising. Mm-hmm. Cashing his amount of money in the bank. The purpose of the one and only true purpose of that thing. And then uh, you know his his whole stick with with McIntyre and now you know being tag team champ with Bobby Roode I think his name yeah yeah and you know what else is crazy about Ziggler is um, we're talking about Wrestlemania there was one year the Raw after Mania I don't remember if it's when he cashed in but he won the heavyweight title on the Raw after Mania oh really Mm -hmm. so it's like so he won both titles oh okay yeah he's he's won he's won his fair share of titles but for some reason WWE just doesn't put the rockets on him. Like they just give him a month, and it's like, sorry, dude. You know, I was about to say, comedy. You know, cause yeah, stand up comics. So. Yeah, I was about to say like, I remember like I'll be watching certain shows, and I was I was just like, why does Ziggler look like Shawn Michaels, pants and everything? You know, I was like, please don't tell me you're pushing this guy as the next Shawn Michaels. They tried. Yeah, they tried. They yeah, every, I all I remember is that everyone hated it. You know? Yeah, but and, I mean, he, they he love the Dolph. Talent. Yeah, he yeah, has. He yeah, has he has the. the, the and, and the fucker sells like crazy, dude. Like he is one of the best sellers in the business. Like he will make it seem like he is get dying in the uh, ring. I, you know? I, yeah, I was about to say I was listening to uh, Edge and Christian's podcast while I was walking my dog, and the episode was Dolph Ziggler, and he mm-hmm. always says that he always tries to like sell 
as good as possible. Um, I forgot how, he he mentioned like he watches something, so he he uh, so he can try to sell properly. I just forgot what he's, it was. Well, and he's also an actor too, and I think he took acting classes, and that's what helped him. Okay. And yeah, and like he, I think that's the problem is his selling is so good that they they tried to put that Shawn Michaels thing on him because Shawn that was Shawn Michaels' big thing is he was, uh, uh, he was a great seller too. Overseller, so, maybe. <laughs> well, but Dolph is an overseller, too. That's true, but yeah. He, but he oversells to the point where it's refreshing because you don't see that very much That's anymore. true. It's, it's high spots everywhere. I'm going to kick you in the face, then we're going to jump up, and then I'm going to kick you in the face. You know, that's Yeah, it. that's true. So, yeah, it's, it, it's more authentic with him, yeah. Mm-hmm. Except that yeah. 2002 <laughs> SummerSlam match with Hulk Hogan where everything's overselling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched that. Uh, yeah, that's... Just, it's it's just, that one. I feel like that was on Hogan though. That was also probably forced on him on Ziggler, and I actually yeah. think I heard something where he was pissed off about that, and that's why he did it the way he did. Yeah, that he overselled on purpose to make it look like shit because he's like, how is this old hag gonna beat me up? You know what I mean? Yeah. So he probably did that on purpose. Oh yeah, I, I believe. Don't blame him. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree mm-hmm. with that. And plus, uh, I heard the whole Hogan was like, yeah, I, I don't want to put Sean over. I was like, I mean. Yep, you know. He's well, so Hulk Hogan, you know, he yeah. was great in the '80s, but the dude is just a terrible human being. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, like Seth Rollins said, yeah. Yeah, and just yeah, he I mean, he likes yeah. he, he likes the attention to himself, which sucks too much. Yeah, too way much. too much. You mm-hmm. know, way too much. Like like we mentioned earlier, the NWO stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to WrestleMania after we ta- go on a tangent. For the fifth time in within sixteen minutes. Hey, we're freestyling. It's <laughs> exactly, okay. exactly. All right, night two. What? Which one's your favorite match? You know, it's really hard to say, but I really did like the uh, the Oscar versus Ray Ripley, and mm-hmm. I also liked the the WWE Universal Championship match. Was great. Oh yeah. Too, pe- people didn't like it, but I think that the ending is what's going to set it up for another feud. I was know? about to say, did you see, apparently there's, apparently, uh, they're about to set it up like that. They should, and that's why they did it the way they Because I, I was just watching WrestleMania, another uh, plug, so go over there if you guys want to learn more, <laughs> uh, that Adam Pierce was like, oh, that's a good take. And then the referee of the, the match was like, I got the final call, all mat- uh, all shoulders won that match. But Adam Pierce replied, was like, see me on Friday, we're going to talk about that. I was like, maybe. Yeah, you can't do that yeah. to Edge. You, yeah. You can, you can pin the hell out of Daniel Bryan. He's yeah. He's a writer, and he's kind of in the twilight. But yeah, and, and he, he, d- yeah, didn't he, someone say that, uh, I heard that it's rumored that he might be done after a rest. Like, there will be a WWE legend who's done after WrestleMania. So, mm-hmm. we're not really sure if it's Edge or... Uh, Daniel Bryan or someone else. It's, there's no way it's Edge, dude. Because yeah, because you know he got robbed after that match with with uh, Orton, and mm-hmm. then was out for a year. There's no way that dude's gonna give it up before he's yeah. touching gold one more time. That, that's you know, true. Just, and with his with Christian doing what he's doing in AEW, mm-hmm. Edge can do the same thing, and he's in better shape than Christian is. So, <laughs> and I love Christian. He, yeah, he's one of my guys too. But oh yeah, you know. I'm, one of my favorites. I'm glad that he went to AEW so he can get some some stardom and you know and yeah. have some main event plugs. So. Yeah. So yeah. But okay. The, yeah. Yeah. But the worst match I was obviously Big E versus Apollo Cruz. I mean, dude, it was Extreme Rules. Yeah. It was Extreme Rules with drums and a gong. Well, they Big E took the gong and just dropped it. And then they didn't even use it. They yeah. didn't even use the gong or the drums. So it's just yep. an extreme rules match. Uh, I mean, I I thought Apollo taking the title was a good idea, but the way he, you know, his character is going, you know, yeah, not well, that. I mean, I like Apollo too, but you, you know, I mean, he's talented. How do you take that off of Big E unless Big E is going to get some type of like ma- like main event um, push? I was right? about to say I, that's the only reason why I think taking it from Big E was a good idea is that unless they're setting up a feud, a uh, main uh, pushing Big E for to a main eventer to a main event. Yeah, 
uh, post, you know, the whole Edge, uh, Daniel Bryan, and Roman Reigns feud. You know, hopefully, Big Man needs needs a needs a push. I think he deserved it, especially his uh, separation from a, a new day. Um, For sure. But yeah, I, I thought that Apollo, you know, taking out, you know, could be a step for him. Probably, you know, getting better opportunities rather than just like having that accent. Well, now well you know, good. with with WWE, it's always you know with Apollo, it's probably going to be one step forward, like three steps back. Yeah, you know that's I mean? true. Like who knows? Come come Friday, they could have another match, and Biggie takes the title back off of them. I hope you know? not. So yeah, I hope not. I hope there's no rematch, or if there's yeah. a rematch, I hope there's no swap. Or uh, yeah. Yeah, in this era of WWE, man, it's all about fifty fifty. You yeah, know, that's one true. man loses one week, the next week they win. It's yeah. Just, I hope they put back the that the who was that who was the superstar was like I put the the honor on the intercontinental sh- championship back by uh by holding on to it for a while. I think it was the Miz. It probably was the Miz. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, it so- it sounds like what it, it sounds like what the Miz say. Mm-hmm. We'll say anyway. So yeah. anyway, what did you think about the inconclusive finish between well Randy Orton won, but <laughs> Bray Wyatt versus uh, Orton match. So the first thing that kind of popped in my mind and that kind of explains why he wasn't released is possibly maybe Aleister Black is coming back. That's what a lot of uh, that's what a lot of people are saying because the black the black stuff you know on, yeah. on Alexa's face. That's and, true. And, the, and the the gurgling the, he, and then you know he wasn't released so. Yeah, they were holding up to them. Yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah, Billy K, which I mean, she wasn't that great, but they could have. <laughs> Let's be honest here. We're gonna switch a little gears here. Yeah, the Iconics are one of the best tag teams that WWE had. Why the hell did they split them up? <laughs> they. I heard like, about that. Why? And then you just release them? I mean, seriously, come on. The bullshit, you know. So they didn't have, but, they didn't have any idea what to do with him. But I digress, and I think maybe that's not going to be an Aleister Black thing. I hope that they don't keep dragging on the feud. I just, where like, oh, Randy's possessing Alexa now. Like, you know, I don't want to see that. I don't hope. I hope not. That's you know, like I said, it's time for the Viper to take a vacation. Yeah, like, yeah. After don't work after on your clothing line, take six mm-hmm. months off. You know, yeah, I, I mean, punch he, somebody in the head. Oh my God, just camera. <laughs> All right, here's here's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if it'll work. Ooh. I can hear you. There we go. <laughs> You can hear me, but my recording couldn't hear me at the moment. So I'm uh, hoping, I'm hoping it's still recording. But I don't want to take risk, so I'm gonna quickly take a break here in three, two, one, pick. I don't know why I did that. Back <laughs> in three, two, one. Yes. All right, we're back after some minor technical difficulties and on my part because uh newbie of a uh, technical in technical aspects i am that i am anyway uh we're talking about orton and the bray white match uh i i i, I remember uh, oh please don't delete that <laughs> email <laughs> i need that email um i i remember reading that or hearing that it was supposed to be going for a Bo Dallas and mm-hmm. and Bray Wyatt match or feud, and then Bo Dallas got released today. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, so no. that. I was like, no, I was like, oh man, that would that could have been a good feud. I was like, damn it. Been. Uh, even though I well, have no idea who Bo Dallas is. <laughs> Bo Dallas is one of WWE's most biggest mistakes because he had a lot of talent. He comes from the same family as Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. Mr. IRS. You know, uh, that's that his father was IRS. Okay. His name, what was it? Irv R. Sh- Irwin R. Shyster. He was supposed to be this bad guy tax auditor, of right? Course. Back IRS, in the 90s. Yeah. So- yeah. 
the so, the, uh, the the era of jobs in wrestling. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Where so Kane then, was a you know, dentist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. That was Isaac like... Yankum. Like yeah. But no. Okay. So he, you know, Bo Dallas and Bright White are brothers in real life. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's know where, you know, things. the real storyline would come in where, yeah. like, you know, maybe Bo Dallas is the face trying to, you know, talk some sense into Bray, you know, or, and then he and then he possesses him and then he becomes then like they start a new Wyatt family. Maybe, you true. know, that's what I always that could, wanted that to could, see. Yeah. Then, you know, bye bye, Bo. <laughs> and I also thought, too, that, like, you know, I love Alexa Bliss, but I feel like Nikki Cross would have been better for the role of like Bray Wyatt's woman. You know. All right, let's look up Nikki Cross real quick, because I have no idea what she looks like. <laughs> well, she's you know she's like she had like the crazy psycho gimmick. Okay, I can see it. Oh yeah, yeah I, she, I can yeah. definitely see that. Mm -hmm. I can see that. But, but I think she she kind of uh, Alexa Bliss kind of plays off that um, childish creeper sort of like moniker like. A no, lot totally. Of, yeah. Whereas, no, I'm fine with it. I yeah. like her too, but I think that Nick, even like, because they did a storyline where Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross were like best friends, and then Alexa Bliss got possessed by the the fiend, and Nikki Cross was trying to stop it. And it's like, okay, why didn't you just bring both of them into the feud, you know? And then you could have you know Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss as Bray Wyatt's like cronies, you know? And that would have been one pretty of cool. them turn over, so you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right, Vince. Once again, call us. I don't even know if he knows how to use a phone, you know, so he may, right, you know. Right. Hunter or Adam Pierce, yeah. call us. Call us or, or Vince, send us a fax. Yeah, you know, send us I'll, a fax. Know, I'll, <laughs> I'll buy a fax machine one day. Hell yeah. Right. I will, for sure. I'll, I'll I'll get a pager as well if you need it. Now, let's talk about Riddle versus Sheamus. What did you think I of that? thought that was, if, if Cesaro versus Seth Rollins was a, was a good match last night, this one's a lot better in my opinion. I thought the 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 feud was kind of random, mm -hmm. but the fight, the match was good overall. The bro kick into that flip, that looks too painful. Like, Matt Riddle is just he took that as else, a dude. yeah he took that like a champ. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see he he busted open until my buddy pointed out. I was like what. And mm -hmm. you just see him on the floor with bloodied lip. I was like, oh shit! I thought yep. the kick hit him in the chest. No, it hit him in the mm -hmm. in the chin. I probably and bit himself hard. Oh hell yeah! Mm -hmm. What did you think yeah. about it? I mean, you know, as we said in the first the first episode, it was going to be fifty fifty. But I never really, I guess, believed that Sheamus was going to take the title off of him. Yeah, I didn't think so. You know, either. I I could see it, but I didn't the, really. The the percentage is like yeah. low. Yeah, like I could, and then you know, then apparently it was changed the same day. You know mm -hmm. that that uh, you know Sheamus was going to go over, and that's great. I I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, with Sheamus, how he's been, he should be in the main event. He shouldn't be carrying the U.S. title. That should have been a springboard for Riddle to keep going. And then Sheamus goes to you know maybe fight Drew again or trying to you know get into a match against uh, Lashley. Mm -hmm. You know he would be a great you know, a counterpart to Lashley in a match. I yeah. mean, and that's another thing to make a like, triple threat with Drew, with Drew. Yeah. And just bring up like WWE loves to bring up old demons. Just keep that's bringing it. them up. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, then, uh, but yeah. And then, you know, we got to go back to, we got to go to, to raw after mania real quick. Yeah. What's yeah, the deal it. with retribution coming and helping Bobby Lashley? Oh yeah. I heard that they're the new members of the hurt business. Allegedly. Yeah, and, I, even, I, and the best one, Dominic Dijakovic, wasn't even there, and he's the best one out of Retribution. So I, like, I, I, I was about to say when I first saw Retribution with Ali, I was just like, "Is this really a stable? They look, uh, <laughs> they look awful." Yeah. <coughs> and it I was, was like what? a throwback. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I I remember uh, you know watch I, I've been watching a lot of like videos about that apparently made uh vince laugh by how stupid they look the 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 names and the mask i was like there were some cool names but i feel like it was kind of too edgy t-bar slapjack i, I like mean, the, those... i like i like slapjack t-bar it was kind of then the, the the third guy i don't even remember 
I just think yeah, Sla- Slapjack was a good name, but I feel like it just didn't fit the the look. I guess I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, and I also don't. I'm not a fan of Mustafa Ali, anyways. I, I think, same. I tried to. I like. I was like, "What's up with this guy? He, he has." He just is like a dollar store version of X Pac. He oh, looks really? just like X Pac. Do you Dying you you know who X Pac is, yes, right? AKA Wolfpack in WCW. Yeah, Wolfpack. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. in WWE, it's X Pac next to DX. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, he looks just like him, but he's not as char- he doesn't have the charisma and. Oh he, yeah, I was about to say yeah. He when the the whole the when they revealed he was part of Retribution, I was just like, oh, and that he was the hacker. You you know, I don't know if you remember that whole story. I, I didn't. That was going I, I just on. caught that last part. I was like, oh, he's the leader of Retribution. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I you, don't. Yeah, go tell me that he's the leader of this group i guess that was just thrown together yeah yeah yeah, it's super thrown together and it's super random that they would announce that they were signed by wwe in my Mm -hmm. opinion in a way yeah oh that made no no problem can they take the contest solution yeah i saw the shoes by the way Mm -hmm. all right sorry about that another editing beep Super special guest unfamiliar. appearance. A special guest <laughs> appearance, you know, from the background, the cameo. But <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that was I, I. I forgot. Oh yeah, the retribution. You see how forgettable they can be. <laughs> I I but I would say this. I hope with the hurt business they can move forward a bit. I was hoping for someone else, like a woman, to join the hurt business. That would be cool. I was. That's hoping, a good like, idea. When you mentioned that, like you wanted to see Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax separate, I was hoping one of them to join. Either one please of, let it be Shayna Baszler. Yes, I don't I'll, I'll, see Nia I'll, Jax anymore. I was about to say it's like I, I'm favoring closer to Shayna Baszler over Nia, but I, I mean I can see both. But um, or here's one for you. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler joining the Hurt Business with Bobby Lashley, all former MMA fighters. Yeah. Come on. Okay, I didn't know about Shayna Baszler being a former MMA fighter. Oh, hell yeah. That was pre- that's pretty cool. I mean, she she looked like one, straight up. Oh, like, dude. Every time I see her, I was, like, I was like, the first time I saw her, I was like, something's about her that just screams non-wrestler, I guess. It's not, if that's a thing, you know. Like, yeah, no. Not, yeah, not yeah. like a wrestler originator or whatnot. Then, you know. You telling me she's a former MMA fighter? I, was, I didn't even know about that. That's mm-hmm. pretty. Yeah, makes sense. And, but I can see Ronda. I mean, whenever she comes back, maybe. Yeah. Unless uh, they decide to put all black people in there only. That's just what I think because that's WWE, dude. And, and but but with the with the like, few retribution people, they kind of tried to I think shake that a little bit. But yeah. I don't see I. Just because of how out of touch Vince is, and I just don't see them adding, you know, w- women or a bunch of white people or yeah. Hispanics and other races just because of Vince. Like, I would be down with it. I don't care, dude. Yeah. Like, as long as you're a badass, you should be part of yeah. the Hurt Business. I, I, I mean, Seamus should be a part of the Hurt Business. I was about to say, uh, I know you don't really like her uh, in-ring skills, but I was about to say since that Sasha Banks is no longer a champion, she could have joined over. I was hoping Bianca Belair to turn heel, but you know, everyone knows she's gonna be champion. Oh, she's the poster girl now. Yeah, too, she's man. the poster. Yeah, I was about to say. And I'll tell you something right now. Yeah. And I'll tell you something right now. Her mic skills have have like gotten better overnight because when she was doing her promos, like during the rain delay and all that, were just top notch. Mm-hmm. And I think. That's because those promos were all top notch by all those people, and I think it's because they weren't scripted. Yeah. Because it was during the rain delay, mm-hmm. and all those promos were genuine, were on just on point. Yeah. And Bianca Belair was part of that, and I like the emotion she brings. And I also thought that the match was one of Sasha Banks's where she really showed out. She oh, looked yeah. great, and I don't find her attractive typically, but she was banging that night, dude. Like, <laughs> yes. her, her hair, the oh, gear, yeah. Yeah. everything mm-hmm. was, she lo- was she great. She looked great. Yeah, everything mm-hmm. about Banks on that night was great. Yep. Talent and everything. But, yeah, oh, anyway, next one is, actually, let me check. We're not going to no, talk about... KO and Sami Zayn. Yeah, I was about to say, I was, I was about to say I'm not going to talk about chi- the t- women's tag team match. We'll just no. talk about that. But, yeah, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul. 
I'm just gonna get it out of here and say Logan Paul took that like a champ. <laughs> the, I mean, it's a stunner. It's a simple the stunner is like one of the easiest moves yeah, to take. Yeah. So if you can't take a stunner, then it hit sucks. the road. Yeah, but I mean, he still took it. You know, he he was there. I I I, I like his reactions for every bump they do. He's just like, oh my god. Yeah, he oh. was too uh, overselling the Dolph Ziggler thing. Yeah, and just. Yeah, but I I, I I like it because you know it's something my buddy at the time would do too. You know, right. he was like, oh, I, that is. He was pointing out, I was like, that's something I would do. You know, seeing a live match up close like that, and not knowing anything about WWE, I would be like, what the fuck? They're you know doing flips over the top rope. I I think that happened most likely with those two. I want to say, yeah. I want to say this as well. I don't like current Sami Zayn, but I think he. I mean, I now I I wasn't even from the beginning, but I think he had talent, like he can oh. actually pull it off. I just don't like the conspiracy stuff. I think it's great because he makes everybody hate him, and I that's think, what you're supposed to do. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Like you're supposed, and he is the perfect smarmy, annoying jackass mm-hmm. type heel that wwe doesn't really have much of you know yeah. a lot of the heels you got roman who people like because he's a badass you know yeah. you've got U- the U- uh, jay uso who's a badass and mm-hmm. i like him too so it's Jimmy. good to have <laughs> yeah well where, where are you where are you at bro like, i know i thought he was did just you get small. locked up again did you you know like what happened <laughs> oh my god are you in the U- uso penitentiary like no daddy but... rikishi put him uh grounded him Right. <laughs> yeah, I gave him the stink face. Yeah, yeah. But Put him no, in a corner. Like, and Kevin Owens is just is I've. It's been a long time, and if ever I've seen a guy with his stature to be so athletic and crisp and do just everything he does is mm-hmm. just gold, man. Mm-hmm. And and him and Sami Zayn, like we talked about, have a lot of chemistry. They've been so wrestling they together for to years. Play. So they know and, how to you know do mm-hmm. each other's. Uh, moves and such and how to sell right. properly and such. And right. And and also too, I just don't like Logan Paul just because, you know, him and his brother just pander to like the 10 year old kids and yeah. take their money and then that's just some yeah. cheap shit, you know, and you want to get into some boxing matches where I, it's like completely fixed and like you want to act like you're some badass. Like, dude, I'm not, I would punch him straight up if I saw him in public. Either one of them. I'll, hey, Logan, Jake, I'll box you guys both at the same time. I don't give a shit. There we so go. Hit me up. There's yeah. the uh, there's the challenge. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I was gonna put something else in the talk. Uh, I'm zoning out. I, I'm blanking out. I I was like, oh okay, I'll ask a question or throw that comment. But I just forgot about it, but I forgot it again. It, it just like came back real quick. Ah. <laughs> uh, Anyway, let me see. Uh, I did not watch that SmackDown tag team uh, match Mm-mm. because it was on SmackDown, not mm-hmm. on Wrestle. Yeah, I know. They, yeah, they ran out of room. Mm-hmm. I mean, we re- haven't really touched on Oscar versus Rhea Ripley yet. Oh that yeah, match. that's right. That's right. That match. What did you think about that one? I'm glad that Rhea Ripley won mm-hmm. because she. She looked like a badass, dude. Like, yeah. I was a little pissed that Charlotte didn't show up and try to continue yeah. their feud from last WrestleMania. I am a self-proclaimed Charlotte fanboy. It's okay. Uh, but, no, she looked really she has good. The talent. Asuka is, is great in the ring, but, like I said, she just can't connect with fans. It's just, oh, yeah, it's just it it's... doesn't happen. Maybe, and, you know, Japanese wrestler, wrestling fans, maybe. Well, yeah, no, and I mean, I like, you know, MPJW. Like, I like watching their stuff, but I don't understand it. And yeah. for me, like, I have to, most wrestling fans, especially, like, the younger generation and people that are really into it have to be able to connect, you know, to care about the storyline. Mm-hmm. And most of the time when Oscar comes out, it's like, okay, she's going to say three words in English, then it's going to be a bunch of gibberish. She's going to, you know, sp- you know, sp- bit green mist on someone or she's gonna you know make them tap out you know that's like it there was no depth to her character mm-hmm. with ripley there is you know she's an up-and-comer she's been on the scene for a while now but you know she has you know the potential to be the 1a to charlotte you know and then she's big she's attractive she's good on the mic she will kick your ass that and... is true. i will let her kick my ass 
<laughs> yep. Absolutely. No, yeah, totally. So, yeah. I mean, it just I'm glad it was a good it was a good transition to a new era of women's yeah. champions with both Bel Air and Ripley. Mm-hmm. It just made sense, you know, and they were also the last two in the Women's Royal Rumble this year. Okay. So that works, too. Oh, okay. You know, so okay, it makes, all works. That makes sense, yeah. And now we're heading for Charlotte versus Ripley, it looks like, which oh, I really? am here for it. Yeah, because if hey, you, you know what? did you watch uh, the Raw after Mania? Uh, not not going to lie. I do not care about the uh, the shows at the moment. Because yeah. Not gonna watching WrestleMania like a lot of people you know backstage were like it's so good performing in front of live audience mm-hmm. and I feel like with the TV and stuff it, I do miss the live audience I I tried oh, totally to for it. sure I tried to watch an episode before and I was just like it's not the same mm-hmm. I mean sure you have the promos great storylines great feuds but the lack of fans like straight up threw me off and i was just like i kind of miss the the fans the live audience uh, yeah you know, i mean actions. that to, to be honest with you after quarantine like where we didn't have anything to do like olivia uh, you know olivia my fiance and i both we got tired of watching it and we would just look online after yeah. you know and, re- and yeah. read the recap so yeah. you know but i i still watch bits and pieces but it's mostly for like background noise you know mm-hmm. So I did see the Charlotte segment, and oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. she had a it. great line. She had a great line. Karma is a bitch, and I am that bitch. And I was like, "You're damn right. You are that bitch. You let <laughs> hey, them you know." Hey, not gonna lie. If your dad is one of the best mic guy mm-hmm. ever, you would pick that up, hands. Down. Yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 now it seems like they're going full heel with her because she uh, crashed. There was a rematch for the Raw Women's Championship at the end of the night. Oh, really? And she ended up crashing it and destroying both Ripley and Oscar. Oh, okay, so like completely uh, inconclusive. Yeah. Match. So okay. and then after afterwards, Ripley was like talking about, "I'm so sick of Charlotte. She's jealous of me. This, that, and the other." So it's a start of a, a okay. feud between them two. Hey, and maybe we can have a great match between them. Oh, it will be. I mean, maybe the last year time. one at WrestleMania wasn't. It was good, but Rhea Ripley for some reason they put her in some weird looking gear. Like oh, they put her like in white v- and blue. It was a apparently, apparently it was like a Vegeta Dragon Ball Z reference to Vegeta. I mean, she was she looked hot though, oh, dude. Yeah. But it it didn't go with her with her uh, character. Yeah, with her character, it, she looked great. Mm-hmm. You know, great throw. Uh, you know, pretty much a great uh, reference to everyone's favorite prince. <laughs> and yeah. uh, but like you said, it just didn't fit her style, her her gothic look. You know, it's too bright for her. Right. Anyway, and yeah. anyways, and still sticking with Charlotte, did you see why she was out of WrestleMania? Uh, I forgot the reason. It was a false pregnancy uh, test that oh. uh, WWE gave her and told her she was pregnant. And then it came out that she possibly had COVID. And then oh, okay. turned out that she was, just, she was just sick or something like that. Okay. So, yeah, Yeesh. way to go, WWE. Yeesh. Could have gotten and, a great, possibly a triple threat match. I would have, you know, between Ray Ripley, Asuka. Yeah, I wanted that, but I like the way they're doing it now because then you're going to have a one-on-one match probably. Hopefully, <laughs> they don't they put a, Asuka you know, back Asuka, in the yeah, shit. Yeah, like, know. like Dago Bryan. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, okay, come on. You know, maybe they'll do that for the pay-per-view and then try to wait till what is it, SummerSlam, I guess, probably. or to do the uh to do the one on one I don't know but I'm also waiting for Becky Lynch to come back I'm waiting for Ronda Rousey to come back I mean I think there's a Becky, lot of women I I was really hoping for uh Becky to come uh come back this this past weekend I uh, thought she was I, I mean uh, <laughs> I thought Charlotte and Bailey were going to crash the turmoil match completely overpowering everyone else winning and then winning the tag match I was like okay that would be you know great start That'd but, be dope. And we just but, got Bailey as the loud loud mic amongst the uh, hosts. Ding dong, bye bye. Yeah, that stupid shit, you know. The John Cena quote. I was like, yeah. I was and like, kind of unnecessary, but you know. It's just crazy. That. It's crazy the parody that they have in WWE, where someone like Bailey literally has to like have a small talk show every week and doesn't get to wrestle. You know. Yeah. Like it's I, just. I heard she hasn't wrestled since February. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know what like the deal was. If she's hurt, it or... was like around 
Royal Rumble, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it it's just it's crazy. They then WWE keeps their talent, you know, and pays them so they don't go to AEW. But yeah. at some point, like yeah, they released some people today. But at some point, you're gonna have to release some of the bigger names because. It's just too much, and you don't have stuff for everybody. And there's so many people that are just sitting in the backstage and aren't aren't working that deserve to work. Yeah, you there's know? like too many uh, superstars at the moment, mm-hmm. and like main event type. Like yeah. they have weight; they're too top heavy. You know, they have they don't have very many tag teams. I mean, they split up Otis and Tucker, which was so stupid. Oh, the, 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 oh yeah, the, the, the heavy the heavy, machinery. heavy machinery. Yeah, yeah, and then they put Otis with it's. What, Al- what was is, it Alpha something? Yeah, with with Chad Gable, and it's yeah. and I, and now it's like the Gable Training Academy or some shit, and it's like, why do they do this shit? You know, they do they did it with the Iconics, and yeah. then they put Peyton Royce with someone else, and they try to put Billy Kay with Carmella, Carmella. and then with they Peyton do it with Royce. Otis and Tucker, yes, and then they do it with Otis and Tucker, and then you you're left with nothing. You don't have any tag teams, and yeah. that used to be what was great about WWE back in the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian. Mm-hmm. Dude, Almost everybody Dudley. had a tag team. Mm-hmm. The Dudleys, hell oh, yeah, dude. dude. The Dudleys, and and you know they they want to go back to the stable thing. Why not make it to where like everybody that's on TV, TV is part of one specific stable? You know, yeah. so that way everybody has somebody to have their back, and then it makes sense then, when you. Yeah. yeah and that's sense. the way they used to do it, but they just I like it's just. I it's guess all they, they just, tried to be something new, but it's clearly not working out. Um, well, and you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and you know, and Vince thinks he's ahead of the times, and he's just stuck in the sixties. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Still, pop- I, I'm not gonna. After watching Monday Night War, I feel like I, I think I said this last week that if it just feels like it's back to what it was back then. Now, where we know who's a heel, we know who's a you know who's a face. Mm-hmm. Instead of like in the attitude there with between Rock and and Stone Cold, both have attitudes, but you're still rooting for both of them, even though one of them is a heel, one of them's a face. But you know you, they're just they just have well, that. yeah. But see, back then too, though, is like the cool thing about it was is that you would have equal amounts of fans that were like That's you right. know like Team Rock and Team, Team Col- Cold. Stone Cold, yeah. Team Triple H. And also the it just and also too like you said if we had fans things would be different but we just have people on screens so yeah. we don't get to know their actual reaction to mm-hmm. these these Especially these wrestlers. Especially with the with the fake uh, crowd reactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and even I, like the reaction to Roman, they weren't even sure how people were going to react to Roman at Mania. And yeah. I mean, it's just I actually don't. Remember. It's a Did weird they time. Boo? I think it was boo, but it wasn't as much as he was booed when he was a face. Oh, because oh, yeah, people, li- I mean, people like I like his attitude. I like the way he is. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. The, it he's fits quiet. It. He makes you listen to him, and he beats your ass. You yeah. know what I mean? And, it, it and really yeah, straight up fits the tribal chief persona. And he wins, and by nefarious means. But you know what? If you're a mob boss or a tribal chief, you're gonna do whatever the hell you need to do to yeah. win. It's just how it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. And I, I like exactly. that, you know, yeah. and I and I think that and Paul having, Heyman's run his course. Yeah, I think he I would needs say, to go. Yeah, he needs to go. Um, and maybe bring Brock back and have Paul Heyman go back with Brock. And then you've got a big-ass match between Roman and Brock or yeah. even Edge and Brock. Uh, probably Who not. knows? I, have, I feel like Brock is way too physical for Edge at the moment, especially, the, you know, with the surgery and yeah. stuff. But I can definitely see uh, uh, Roman against Brock one last time. Mm-hmm. Or... or a Lashley versus Brock. I want to see that so want, bad, dude. Yeah, yeah. I just like want to watch those dudes match. kick the shit out of each other, yeah, man. Like they yeah. would, and they would, they would tear the house down. And especially how well uh, Lashley did last uh, this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's been on fire. He's almost getting to where it's almost like, and he's gotten so much better on the mic too that. Is he? Yeah, I mean, he used to be very bland, but now because of his character and, like, the Hurt Business, like, it's the same thing. It That's the problem, though, is it's kind of similar to the Roman Reigns shit, you know? But I like that. Like, I like the guy who, you know, talks quiet, makes you listen, you know, with and will great, beat you. Yeah. With a great mic, mm-hmm. MVP is amazing. 
No, he he really he, is. He was born for that. Match. And I remember at the Rumble that I went to when Edge came back, everybody was overlooking the fact that MVP came back during that Rumble. Oh yeah, he and had I mean, the, he had the Black Panther stuff. Yeah, and I pop, I popped like a motherfucker for MVP too, you know. But everybody else, and that's what was sad is everybody else in the crowd that night was upset that MVP came back because they wanted CM Punk or they wanted you know some other shill, you know. But MVP is a man of the business, the man. Wrestling saved his life. He yeah, was in prison. Yeah. He learned how to wrestle, mm-hmm. and now he's just he's uh, a star. Yeah, yeah, and he's going and he's like, doing it for his son too. Yeah. Like he, it's he, and yeah. That's, he, like I, I remember that he talked about his uh his attire. It was because his son loves Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Because yeah. I remember the first time I watched it, this was me prior to knowing that it was because of his son. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Is it because you know Black Panther was one of the biggest movies of the previous years right or, you know he th- he sees himself as the as a king or something then mm-hmm. you know with the knowledge now i'm like okay that's pretty cool he did it because his son loves black panther yeah you know? and, and he, yeah and, and, he, and, looked, he looked great in it. <laughs> Not gonna lie. yeah no he did and speaking to mvp too he's one of those other you know like booker t where he was underutilized because honestly because of his skin color and because when he was, when I was young, dude, he was I his... fucking hated that dude. He made me hate him, and that was so good. And he was him so good and, in the uh, Mr. Did did he have a feud with Mister Kennedy? Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, and I'm sure I, I he thought did. that was like the battle of the mics, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the... MVP has just always been overshadowed, and he's been great in the ring. He used to be like when he was younger, dude was I could go with anybody. Super athletic, fast, agile. I thought his uh, his finisher was great you know if, oh the yeah the leg thing the, yeah the, leg neck the, breaker or whatever the playmaker or whatever it's yeah, called the playmaker, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. where he does the thing and then yeah <laughs> yeah he always does it, it then he does the leg swinging leg mm-hmm. breaker yeah no he was he was top notch back in the day and underutilized mm-hmm. so but it's cool anyway. to see him getting some recognition oh yeah great. anyways it's like survivor series <laughs> i don't know if they want to do this lashley Versus Tribal Chief Reigns. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> you know, that, that, hey, Hunter, Sean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> whoever's in charge of creative team. Whoever's call watching. Us. I know, whoever's <laughs> watching from WWE, call us. I will write the good shit for you. But anyway, last but not least, we talked a little, uh, little bit subjectively about this match. The Universal Champ, uh, Universal Championship match between Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Roman Reigns. I thought each, even though like, I've said this numerous times, not a big fan of Daniel Bryan, but all of them were amazing. That I was. They like, were top notch. Oh, yes. And then they, it was all equal too. There was no was one in, person laying off on the side. You know, they were everyone's all. Everyone's like, yeah, it was like if one's down. The other one will step up, then you know, swip swap every time. Like, and then I, oh, how about the the spot with the chair leg? Yes, then, I was about to say, dude, that was sick, man. And Roman looked like he was dying, dude. dude like, I'm a, I like, oh man, dude, the, great then, sell then, job. Uh, what was it? The yes lock? Yes, the yes lock. Of, I was like, damn. Yeah, and I thought then, I was like, oh my god, Daniel Bryan's about to shock us again. He's about to win. And then here comes Edge, and it's like, what the hell, really? All I remember was like, god damn, I don't want to be Roman Reigns at the moment. Right? He he looked legitimately like, and he just got those veneers like a year ago. It's probably like, dude, I got 10 grand in my mouth. Don't fuck my teeth up, you know? You go bar and then a lock. I was like, yeah, I can't. His face, that's got to be a meme, dude. dude, His face. There was a meme. It's like Edge was 2020, Roman Reigns, me. Then Dango Bryce 2021. (laughs) Dude, just perfect. That was was a beautiful spot. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, this is like the perfect summarization of 2020 and 2021. For a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. and I was just like, but, you know, it was all great. Jay Uso getting injured, <laughs> getting, you know, getting kicked up for a while, then coming mm-hmm. back at the dire part of the match. Yeah, and which I knew that you, you yeah, just, you knew bad. that was coming. But for me, I was hoping that he would be thrown out. And then it's like, let Roman win this on his on own. On his own, yeah. I you was, know. Yeah, because it's mania, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not some third rate pay per view where you want a dusty finish or some shit. They should have just, if he was gonna win, they should have just did it. Yeah, let Mm -hmm. him come out strong. 
Yeah, and then do own. or or do the Edge and Daniel Bryan thing without Uso coming back out. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. So, yeah, like, but we don't always get what we want. So, <laughs> gotta have the enforcer at all times. Yep. Um, what else is mem- Oh yeah, when did they change? I, I've always thought DQ was allowed in triple threat match. No, I mean because it doesn't make sense because who wins? That's true. I guess. And what it's not fair to the other person, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. But there are some times, though, where I've noticed that they, they still try to count them out in a triple threat match, which I think is – it's dumb. Because, yeah. it, you know, it's like you have a no DQ match, then why are you counting the dude out? Or also, why, like, why does a rope break end the hold? You know, like, if it's no DQ, you can hold on to the, the hold. Of, if they're holding on to the rope, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah it was a weird – yeah. There, like, I remember hearing about it and seeing them use the, the still – stairs still steps i'm just like hey wait a minute i thought i thought DQ was a thing on triple threat as well <laughs> no nope. my friend and uh, i am assuming fatal four is the same same way and fatal five same way, one apparently yeah well, yeah <laughs> all right when's uh sinister six <laughs> match <laughs> six you're right the, the, the or a gauntlet match whatever uh, the hell you want to call seven, it you know? the gauntlet se- seven gauntlet and fuck Whatever. it, just put, you know, 50 men in the ring and have it, you know, a pinfall match. You know, everybody <laughs> pinning each other. Oh, you know? man, it's, the, it's the entire locker room from all three brands. <laughs> yeah, right. And to- they, all the people that you never see, you know, Mojo Raleigh, even though he is released, is there somehow, you know. <laughs> Andrade is back. Like, Andrade is, oh, shit, Andrade. <laughs> Andrade is back. CM Punk, <laughs> hey, I thought he's done. <laughs> oh, right? Wouldn't that be some funny shit that like people have been waiting for 10 years for CM Punk <laughs> to come back, and that's how he comes back, and people don't even know? Like... <laughs> then you see random people, hey, is that Cody Rhodes? What the fuck? Oh, well, that's my next-door neighbor. What the fuck? Yeah, Tiger hey, Woods, what are you doing there? Hey, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, right? what, what, what am I doing there? What am I doing there? I don't remember that. Was I roofing? <laughs> Damn, that's some good shit, man. <laughs> Don't remember, you know, I'm not Bruce. But yeah, I thought that that main event was good. That was really good. But like you yeah. said, they should have let Roman Reigns finish strong by having him. What did you think about the the double double pin? Well, it's obvious. You know, it's it's obvious that hope that hopefully it's obvious that I hope that doing, it's going to yeah. continue the feud between Edge and Roman because mm-hmm. that to me you have to get Edge the title at least one more time, you know, and then he can drop the title and then start putting guys over yeah. on his way out, you know. But you, he's worked so damn hard, and he's been through so much. Daniel Bryan's had another title run after he came back from his injury. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to give it to Edge, and he's so damn entertaining. And since he's he since doing the energy. and he's doing the since doing the Viking stuff and all that, he has gotten so much better at conveying oh, yeah, his emotion, yeah. and like he just. He just – he really does have that grit where, like, you're like, man, this dude is about to snap on someone. I don't remember if it was Fastlane or an episode of Raw, and I was just like, damn, you can just see this guy's rugged, you know, mm-hmm. from eyes, the facial hair and everything. He has the – look, like, he has the expression on his face like, I'm done with this. I just – you know, I want what I was promised. Yeah, and I'm it's about like, to blow up. Exact, yeah. Oh, well, he did blow up. And people forget Edge is a big dude. Like he's like six five. You yeah. know, he's a big fucking dude. Yeah. So he can stand toe to toe with Roman. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And 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 it's also you know the cool thing I like about Edge too is like at Royal Rumble when he came out, you could see the emotion in his face. Like oh, he was yeah. about to he was about to cry. Dude. I heard he's he like, cried. Man, I, in yeah. Well, he he was yeah, and he was about yeah same thing. You know, and that's that's just what I've always like loved about him is just he doesn't hide his emotions yeah. and. And, you know, he just, just has been a badass yeah. his whole career. And also one of the legendary first ever Money in the Bank winner. The first ever, if yeah. I'm right. Yeah, yeah it the is first. The, the first. Yeah. I can forget and who that. set the tone and set the tone for the Money in the Bank yeah, from exactly. that moment forward. Mm-hmm. First and he was also, and, and, and he was funny too, dude, like with, with <laughs> Christian and all the stupid oh, shit yeah, that his- they did. The whole. Hilarious. Uh, I think, I, I don't remember if it was a feud with. Kurt Angle, but he had like pictures, and on the back it says, "You suck, yep. kick my ass, whatever." I was like, "Oh, that's the way they sold that was good." It yeah. was golden, dude. Kurt Angle is straight up a hilarious dude as well. So yeah, he is so dry was... and funny, dude. <laughs> exactly, yeah, he is it, it works. It works, dude. Mm-hmm. And the, their chemistry together was just great. 
And then have you seen the Conquistadores bit but with no. him and Christian where they dress up in like body suits of gold and like they, they 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 fool the WWE staff to look like their new wrestlers. And they're trying to speak Spanish, and it's I, just okay, I gotta see this. You gotta watch that shit, dude. <laughs> I, it's like the, I, I love par- it's I love parodies in WWE. Like sometimes they yeah. they know they're it's too damn stupid that they will do it just for sake of entertainment, and it's comic relief, you exactly. Know? You, so. And sometimes it's you know like badass people who can pull it off, mm-hmm. and you know it's just great. It's all around great. Also. I just remembered what my question was. So, <laughs> we're going from WrestleMania, since we pretty much covered most of it, and we're not going to talk about the tag team match. Um, here's my question to you. At their peaks, who would you, what would be your dream match between two wrestlers? For me, if Sting signed with WWE early, Sting. Now I gotta think of another versus one. Versus Undertaker. <laughs> you fucking cheap bastard. Now I gotta think of another one. <laughs> I thought. I, I, I remember the whole time this past week. I was like, man, that dream match. Yes, yes. I'm gonna qu- ask him that so I can like, finally say that I've always wanted to see Sting versus Undertaker. That on the mm. peak, not not like, uh, however old Sting is at AEW. No, I'm talking about. Probably early two thousands thing with American badass Taker. I feel like that would have been a great match between the two. I think that he, I think Paranormal Taker would have been good too uh, yeah. because oh, yeah. they're both paranormal and and that's mm-hmm. I think that's everybody's like base dream match I guess. really yeah because I mean, it never even, happened yeah that's true. yeah yeah and plus I never I always thought Sting was straight up. Uh, a TNA or slash Impact character, so I didn't really imagine that Sting, you know, coming out like being a WWE fan, or like wrestler, you know, coming from originating in WCW, we at the same time with Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and Hogan. I'm assuming, right? Yeah. He's a old dude still yeah, going so at I, it. At I, AEW, and I and I just thought of one off the top of my head. Okay, all right, shoot it. Bear with me, okay? Andre the Giant. Big Show, Braun Strowman, Triple Threat. I feel like... Hmm. At their prime. At, at their, their prime. prime. When Giant could still move around. I was going to say, could, like, it depends on if they around. can move, move around much. I I haven't really seen Andre the Giant, you know, like er, like peak, uh, peak Giant stuff. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've seen, you know, Braun Strowman. I mean, he's currently at his... I would say probably closest to his peak or if not his peak he's just that he's stuck with terrible booking i guess it's terrible booking yeah because the man is is gold and oh yeah he he he, that's another like we're getting on a tangent but he conveys emotion so well too i mean like he scares me through the tv you know like (laughs) i feel like i'm half of him yeah no dude yeah if i stood next to him i'll be like exactly half of that guy yeah, he's a terrifying mm-hmm. force. And the thing is, is Big Show, when he came to WWE, because of course he was in WCW first as the Giant. Yeah, as the Giant. You know, it's supposed to be Andre the Giant's son, which is fucking dumb, you know. Yeah. But anyways, they don't even look so like him. no, other than the hair <laughs> and the and the singlet, you know. Yeah, so, the singlet. You know, it's just, but it just would be great to see like the three top monsters in the same ring you know Mm, and i think that braun Strowman is already one of the top monsters ever you know i mean just that's out of believability dude and athleticism like and plus he looks a lot better than when he debuted really Uh, though dude i mean he has worked his ass off Mm -hmm. man and he's had a lot of injuries and a lot of tough times but you know he's persevered and Hopefully, sometime soon, Hopefully he's going to get a serious him, yeah. push, and they're not going to just push. give him the strap for one week and take the shit off. Oh, you know, is that what happened him... last time? <laughs> that would always happens. I think he's touched the title maybe twice, and every time he either gets injured or Oof. see uh, we're going to give it to somebody else. Yikes. So, you they know, just didn't think who knows? That he could be a, a poster boy for a while. But anyway. I think he could be. I mean, I he's he good could. on the mic, yeah. and he's a, he's a good face. Yeah, he's a good face too because like he's who you'd want 
on your side, you know, yeah. like you you don't want to mess with him with him. It's why I didn't like the the storyline with Shane. Like I thought the match was great, but the storyline sucked because it's like really like I don't care if Shane McMahon's got Elias and Jackson Riker in real life. Braun Strowman would throw them across the field, yeah. you know, like. So it's just easy. It's and that, I think that's what's hard with giants in wrestling is that there's no there's not as many legitimate opponents for them. You know, I feel like he, he just came in too late. You know. Yeah, way. and well, he did. But the thing is, though, is that he's a new breed. Like, yeah, he's he's athletic. He's jumped off the top rope. Yeah, he can climb a cage. Uh-huh. He can run around and do the Strowman and Express and run your ass <laughs> over, break the cage, which that looked. <laughs> Real as hell, <laughs> dude. I was because he struggled scared. at first and yeah. then just ripped that shit yeah, off. Yeah, I like, got. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> yeah, and I and I I, I saw it coming because I you know I know Shane's gonna try to taunt him and he stuck his hand through and it's like oh, yeah, that, that that's kinda... gotta hurt too, you know? Because yeah. Shane's like probably pinning his skin against the the mm-hmm. steel cage, but you know he's throwing himself off a thirty foot rafter. So hell, yeah. Um, so who else? Who, who else would be your dream match? I'm trying to think of one while we went on a tangent with the Giants. We could do women. I know women for me would be probably Trish Stratus versus Charlotte. Okay. Probably okay. in their primes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So. Who's a high? I mean, I was about to say who's a high fly because I want to. I want to say it's like a Lita was a good one too. But oh I, hell I, yeah, that I, did I just her can't, too. You know, maybe Lita and Alexa Bliss would be good. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Maybe uh, Lita versus. Uh, Rhea Ripley could be good too. Yeah, since they have like be. the same, oh, of the same look and such. China versus Rhea Ripley. Okay. Yeah, that would, would be a good say, one. I was about to say. I would just say China would probably kick Ripley's ass. But yeah, based but on size. Size and look. Uh, similar. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. But Rhea Ripley is way hotter than China. So. Oh. Yeah. Dude, some, <laughs> poor China though. Yeah, she rest, just went, God rest her, rest yeah. her soul. She just went crazy after the whole McMahon stuff. Um, who else? Who else is a good one? Ma'am. I mean, I... I hmm. Shawn Michaels versus Seth Rollins. Maybe. AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels. That one. That one's going to be a good one. Yep. Both yeah. at their prime. I'm, this one is what I'm hoping for next WrestleMania. The Rock versus Roman Reigns. We're all hoping, oh, We're all hoping because we're he did hoping. tease that. He was like, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe if there's a good storyline, we'll, we might be able to get it. You, you know, I often wonder, though. Do you, I wonder if The Rock can still go. You know, because he's gotten so big that, like, it makes me think that he wouldn't have the steam to to wrestle unless he, like, cut down on his size. You know, he's more of, like, weight trained now and then cardio. I'm probably stupid, but it's a theory. Yeah, it could be. It could be, like, he's, like like you say, he's mostly weight training. So Mm -hmm. he's building up, especially. I mean, of uh, course, I wouldn't say that to his face, but, you know. (laughs) If I say that to his face, I would probably get. You know, crunch into a ball and get. The, you get saw the, where he ripped his gate off, right during yeah. the power outage, dude. He ripped oh, his he re- gate. Oh off. Yes, yes, yes. And it's yes, like I, re- okay. I remember seeing. I was like, "Yep, this man is gonna crunch me like a ball and full court toss me all the way to the basket, <laughs> just like uh, monsters did to J- Michael Jordan in Space Jam." <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, um, another one. I want to pit uh, Stone Cold with someone. That's right. Stone Cold CM Punk, I guess, because I never sure. really got the CM Punk thing, but the cult of fans that he had and the pops he would get, yeah, that's true. And the attitude was very Stone Cold like. Yeah. So Stone Cold versus CM Punk would be great, or even Stone Cold versus John Cena, Stone Cold versus Stone Cold versus anybody in his prime. Just... Oh, dude, especially. With but the I attitude? think that yeah. yeah, I think that he was in the right place at the right time, oh, and yeah, if it he wasn't. Was perfect. If it wasn't for that promo he made when he won King of the Ring, yeah, the oh. Austin three sixteen says I'm gonna whip your ass, dude. You know? That was like, a great promo, dude. That was great. If if he if that never happened and if Triple H hadn't gotten in trouble and from, you from know about click. that, yeah, from if he didn't click. get in trouble, he was gonna be the King of the Ring that year, and yeah. there would probably be no Steve Austin, you know. So We've gotten too early of a uh, King of Games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, yeah, but I, I mean, Triple H is one of my all-time favorites oh, too. Yeah. He's just and, and his entrance is iconic. Everybody's done the yeah. spit in the shower, you know. Shower, yeah. 
Dude, I yeah. do mine in the middle of the hallway <laughs> or in my bedroom, you know? In the middle of my apartment. Exactly. You know? like, oh, there goes my headset. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, I was growing up when no one's around, you know, or waiting for the school bus. I'll be like, wow. Or in the pool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be like, Whoa, I did it again. <laughs> But yeah, I would just randomly do that. Then I was like, okay, time to grab some paper towels so I can wipe this away. <laughs> so mommy doesn't kick my ass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. no one mom, dude. <laughs> Get mad. Yeah, dude. No, I remember me and me and my buddy, we were real big wrestling fans. And we used to literally wrestle on his trampoline. Oh, I bet. And yeah. we would do the iconic entrances. Like, you know, one time we'd be Triple H. Next time we'd be Kane. You know, then we'd be Taker. Yeah. For me, I'd be yeah, uh, like, Jeff Hardy. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, Jeff Hardy. Here's another one. Jeff Hardy and Evan Bourne. That could be a good one. It's got to be a TLC match, match right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's got to like, be a it, TLC match. It can't match. be a regular match. Yeah. It can't be a regular match. It will be somewhat boring for Jeff. Evan could probably pull it off as a regular match. But as a TLC, I feel like both of them can be can pull out their potential. Yeah, for sure. And jump off some crazy shit, man. That's what I'm sad too, is I don't I'm thinking that Jeff Hardy's on his way out. I'm oh, thinking that he's I uh, he, he, he he's, he's probably gonna go to AEW up. with his brother. Oh, and, probably. They haven't done much to him. Yeah, and I've been seeing him post on Facebook and like some of his posts are kinda cryptic, you know, like where he's kinda I think upset that he's not getting any work, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, I know he's old, you know, he's had Getting substance there. abuse problems. But, you know, he's still younger than Matt by a couple of years. You know, I still feel like he has some left in the tank. I mean, Oh, yeah, he has, I would say, a couple of more years. Yeah, I mean, he's not as bad as some of the other people that they throw on TV every week. Not going to name names, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, there's like I said earlier, there's too much parody, like, in WWE. They need to either develop a third brand that's not main event or NXT or they need to cut some fat more so than what they just did today, you know? So only time will tell, mm-hmm. you know? Who else? <laughs> Let's see. No, there's got to be – and something else I was thinking about earlier, and this is like going way back to the Alexa Bliss and yeah. Fiend thing, is, you know, Finn Balor dropped the title to carry and cross at NXT – Oh yeah. What what if it's Finn Balor that's gonna be coming back as the demon? I mean, you did mention that before that you know yeah. that they they had a storyline with the demon against the fiend. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I mean. I mean, isn't he? Uh, isn't Finn Balor currently as uh, the prince? prince yeah, the Balor. prince Finn Balor. But see. But see, Karrion Cross kind of has a – he's who he lost wow. the title to, and he kind of has a little bit of a supernatural thing going. Okay. So, like, I'm thinking, like, you know, what if he put Finn Balor down and Finn Balor finally comes back? He's not the prince anymore. He's back to being Demon Finn. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I would do. But once again, you know, who knows? That was Adam just Pierce. something that I thought about. Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> Triple H, big fans. Mm. Huge fans. Yeah. Email us. Call us. Yeah. Whatever you do nowadays. You know. Yeah, exactly. Telegraph, whatever. Yeah, exactly. A horse carriage, a, a, a homing Car- pigeon. P- pigeon, yeah. <laughs> Courier, yep. old time males, I don't know. But um, another one. Hmm. I would say something about Triple H, but Triple H has been in the business for so long. We've seen him dress up pretty much mostly everyone. Um, yeah, but I think that maybe Seth Rollins versus Triple H both in their prime would have been better than what we got because Triple H was already getting a little up there in age. Yeah. So oh, okay. maybe you, you take like, you know, early 2000s Triple H where he was setting the world on fire against, you know, the Beast Slayer, the King Slayer, Seth Rollins, and you've got a, a, a pretty damn good match. I was thinking about that earlier. Like uh, when, when I remember last week you told me that um, uh, Seth Rollins gained the names Beast Slayer from – be- beating Brock and Kingslayer from beating uh, Triple, Triple H. H. What if he gets the name Chief Slayer for beating Roman Reigns? Keeps his yeah. his Slayer pers- uh, persona going. Uh, yeah, but and- that's just one that's been overdone already. Yeah, you I know, guess. it's it's. I mean, uh, I could see it though. That I, yeah. I'm not. I wouldn't I mean, hate I'm it. St- I'm still down for a Roman Reigns as Tribal Ch- Tribal Chief Reigns versus whatever. Visionaries Rollins. I love his his character, dude. I, I love I, I, how. Sm- I, 
I I just love how cocky he is, but I, I just yeah. don't know what it is. It, well, it's, it's like he's a he's like transforming from like the Messiah to something else. Yeah, it's like you know, I, I feel like he's still in between that that character phase. Like, and, sure, and he's, he's just such a smart ass dude, and oh, yeah. I it just, he just I love plays it. it so well. Yeah, and, and and his laugh, the the cackle, you know, the <laughs> evil villain cackle, you know, he's yeah. just perfect. He he was built to be in WWE for sure. Oh yeah, and he he's got to be, you know, in the Hall of Fame the year after he retires already, and he's still got plenty of years to go. Yeah. So exactly. I just can't wait to see where he goes. I mean, he when it's all said and done, I think you're gonna look at Seth Rollins like you look at Shawn Michaels. You know, Ray, yeah, I don't really care, but Randy Savage. He's going to be up there amongst the greats. Yeah. I mean, he even may, he may turn out better than Roman turns out, you know? I, I feel like so, he's a lot better than Roman already. <laughs> well, just because, I mean, but yes. But then again, I, I've, like, I've, been, I've been more of a Rollins fan over Reigns fan. Well, me too. Him. I mean, I just I just started liking Roman after he came back from his cancer diagnosis, mm-hmm. you know? So I hated Roman Reigns up until then. And then, you know, I'm a typical human being. When he got diagnosed with cancer, I was like, you know, that sucks. And then when I saw him come back and he was like half the size that he was, I was like, man, there's no, I can't, I can't hate this guy. Like, yeah. you know, and even, even now when he's the tribal chief, he's such a badass that it's like, dude, yeah, I, it's a complete remodel of his character. Yeah. It's, and it's I, so I just, I, I really do love it. And I, it's sad. I never really was the biggest Dean Ambrose fan, but it's sad that we didn't get the, like the three, the, the final, the, 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 the well, not the final thing, but you know, throughout WWE, there's always been, like, the top three guys, you know, like Shawn Michaels, Triple H, yeah. John Cena, you yeah, know, that's right. the top three, you know, and they would have been a good top three, and Dean Ambrose is crazy as hell, will kill himself, you know, for TV time, but... Thinking about his next death match already. Yeah, but... I feel it's... like... Uh, I probably missed it, though, like, uh, I guess they... I'm pretty sure they had... Uh, a triple threat match at one point. Oh, they had, I think, two or three different triple threat matches between each other, you know. Yeah. And the first time was when Seth turned on them, yeah. and then they kind of imploded. And then later on, when Dean turned on them, and then it was like, okay. Because I remember when Ambrose came back from the injury, the dude was jacked. Like, he looked like he was about to take WWE by storm. And then all of a sudden just wanted to leave. And... I don't respect him for that. Yeah. Like, I understand you, like, because he, he knew that if he went to AEW, he was going to get paid big bucks and he was going to be the top because he was all they have yeah. at that point, you yeah. know? And I kind of think that was kind of the chicken shit way to take it out, you know? And he just wanted to kill himself instead of having actual matches. Like, come on. Like, save your body for your wife and your kid that's coming. Yeah, like, stop to trying to kill at, yourself. Look at Jeff Hardy, you know? He mm-hmm. suffered so much with substance abuse. Mm-hmm. And, now and that's how it starts. Like, mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. because he they want to put up a show and next thing you know you're suffering from addiction, you're 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 getting arrested here and there and then stuck at home and no. Problem. Or just cutting yourself all up in the ring for no yeah. reason in a yeah. stupid explosive barbed wire match with Kenny Omega. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And that's okay. I'm about to get on my soapbox. Right, here we What's go. the deal with Kenny Omega? The dude is a fucking generic creative wrestler. He's nothing special. Like, seriously, like, it's, I look at Kenny Omega the way you look at Daniel Bryan. Okay. Absolute trash that, for some reason, is famous, and I don't get it. I just don't get it. Is, I, I I'm really not, don't. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I didn't really follow him. I know my buddy, uh, when, like, when he, when we started talking about wrestling again, he went up and he's like, oh, yeah, Kenny Omega, like, you know, he connects to his fans by, uh, having... Uh, anime characters, video game characters, but I mean, and probably his work at New Japan or was it New Japan? Yeah, which yeah, in New Japan. I heard, right? I, yeah. I heard that he was really good there, but compared to AEW, Kenny Omega. Yeah. Well, and I mean the anime thing and shit has been done for. I mean for years. Yeah, so. but mo- I think it's more like he continuously like like every week he puts up some sort of a reference. Whereas, yeah, well, I mean, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston have been doing that for a long time, too, so. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I don't watch AEW, so I don't really know. Oh, I, was it, I know he was in Impact with the AEW, but uh, I don't Yeah, know, I don't that's a crossover if, thing, yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't remember if he wrestled for Impact prior, uh, but I know, yeah. 
like I said, I don't I don't really get him uh, except for his work in in New Japan. Uh, oh, excuse me. Beautiful. <laughs> anyway, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? <laughs> oh yeah, I was thinking about this. Nineties, uh, early two thousand slash nineties Jericho versus, I won't say current Jericho, but the uh, not his return. Uh, back in two thousand eight, two thousand not that one. Uh, because like he said, then it was like the same character mm-hmm. as before. Um, I guess any time after he turned, he or when he was with Kevin Owens. Maybe I don't know. Oh. oh, dude, that was some gold shit, man. With I the heard, list, yeah. Oh my god, man, that was beautiful. And the way that they ended that was just so perfect. They really did well with that storyline. I heard that he didn't really like how he ended. He wanted to have like a championship reign as a face because all the, every time he became a champion, he's a heel. I I don't know. I I I mean. You know, I I like Chris Jericho, but sometimes I think he's full of himself a little bit too much. You know, like I think he was great, but you know, I, I think that was a perfect ending with the with the list of KO and then boom, you, you know, you know, pow, power bombing oh, yeah, or whatever. Right, yeah. You know, that was just perfect. You don't need a title for that, and that's what some of those guys don't understand. Their egos are so big. You don't need a title, like, for that shit. If it's that serious of a storyline, you don't need a title. It's like with Roman and The Rock. You don't need a title. Yeah, it's you know, just like, a straight-up match, yeah. Yeah, like for the Tribal Chief name, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, come on. You don't need the title. And that's why I think hopefully, hopefully, the next pay-per-view, Edge takes the title off of him and we start gearing up. But with WWE, that's... it's going to be after SummerSlam or Royal Rumble well, yeah, or was, some shit. I was about to say it's probably going to be all the way to SummerSlam, which is, I don't remember when. It's like, uh, it's during the summer, obviously. obviously. I, I think it's like Oct- uh, August, maybe. Okay. But but I could see because of how quick WWE is with all their shit that they wait all the way until Rumble, you know, and then have Rock come out as number 30 or some shit, you know. That's true. Like Knowing them, yeah. Yeah, um, nothing original anymore. So apparently, uh, the new backlash name is WrestleMania, WrestleMania backlash. So I mean, I, I, that, I mean, I've always liked the. I I never I never really thought about this until I was driving home from work today. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, we have WrestleMania, then the backlash from the events yeah. of WrestleMania. Then I, I'm assuming Vengeance was usually next. Uh, I don't remember. For a while there, there was so many pay-per-views yeah, every yeah. year. I don't even remember. No, so, Great American Bash but, was in July. You know, and people and hate Fast Lane, but Fast Lane's a good thing because you're on the Fast Lane to WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, that's come true. on, that's good marketing. You know, so you know, it's just there is. I still think there's too many pay-per-views. If oh, anything, I, it should be like maybe six pay-per-views, one every two months. Yeah, it's like you know, like you said before, like build up the storylines or mm-hmm. something. Take That's out- the only way fans get engaged. I mean, now, right now, I guess it doesn't matter because there's no fans actually there yeah. right now. Exactly. But you know, and I guess they don't rely on pay-per-view sales as much anymore either. It's all advertising and TV deals. Yeah, I was so. about to say now they have Peacock and you know we have the WWE Network prior, no more Peacock, uh, no more Network though. I forgot mm-hmm. when they're ending it or did they end it already? They, are, I think they already ended it. But you know what's strange is that it's it, the only country that they that they're on Peacock. I think is the United States. Oh really? And, either the United States and Canada or just the United States because they they say all the time that. It, WrestleMania is going to be on Peacock or WWE Network and oh, yeah, international, right, yeah. you know. So, it's, I don't weird. know, but they're, it's they're all prob- about... Yeah, they're probably slowly transitioning to Peacock. Yeah, because they had a lot of cool shit. Like, like oh, I yeah. told you last time, they had, like, the collections where you could go and pick one wrestler and just watch, like, all the big moments in their career. I'm like, waiting for, like, s- some of their originals to show up on Peacock, like... The Edge and Christian show, I hear that yeah. is like one of the best shows they've had. Because it is good. Shows. And then Table of Three is also very good. And uh, the Road Trip one I think I s- is is very I, good, I, too. I, 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 no, I didn't see that one there. Yeah, so far it's just mostly documentaries. Not much on the show shows. So I might, I might yeah. have to look into it because I've always been watching the same one, uh, uh, you know, WrestleMania. The Monday Night Wars. Yeah, Monday Night War, yeah. Ruthless Aggression. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, I just like 
yesterday I was going through some of the WrestleManias and just watching here and there some matches. Mm-hmm. Some of them were tough to watch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be- because you know, knowing the knowledge, like uh, in WrestleMania 12, one guy uh, on Instagram messaged mm-hmm. me. He was like, "Hey, can you do a uh, review of this pay per view, which is WrestleMania 12?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll watch it." I watched the first one with the tag match with between Vader and Yokozuna, Team Yoko. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I was upset that he lost, <laughs> but I was like. Fuck Jim Cornette. <laughs> but uh, I, I noticed, like like I said, like knowing the the the, see, the behind the scenes stuff, how, how the communication, you know, I just see this. I just see Vader getting a you know a running power or not power slam. Um, he was in the court in the turnbuckle and Yoko slammed the splash, the running yeah, splash, the running or whatever splash, it is. Yeah. yeah, he was falling. He took a break, looked at his teammates, said, "Come on in." And you see Owen Hart halfway through the ropes. Trying to get in, I was like, "Someone missed their cue." <laughs> well, like, that wasn't the only cue that Owen Hart missed. No, so. but, oh, I repeat, <laughs> oh, it sucks, dude. No, it's so sad. Yeah. That guy, from all accounts, like a great person, like and I, a great I wrestler. Heard, I I heard his uh, feud with his brother was great, dude. It was, dude, and he was so fucking just full of himself in that feud dude like he was so mad and it, it was, was a straight up you know feud. it was genuine right like yeah. you know that this guy has a lot of jealousy for his his brother yeah. you know i mean to be honest with you bret hart was bland as fuck dude like owen hart had so much more personality now they were about even as far as skill in the ring but for me i would have put that belt on owen hart before i put it on his brother i would have made owen hart the star instead of turning him into some superhero so uh, you know yeah. All right, back to our dream matches. Let's do tag teams. Who would you say would be a good tag team match? I want to say um, the Usos against Hardy Boys. It's a good one. I'm gonna take it back. Uh huh. Okay, the Rockers, which is uh, Shawn Michaels and, and Marty Jannetty, oh, okay. back in the eighties. Oh 80s yeah, that's right, that's right. Versus. Uh, Versus the Hardy Boys or Edge and Christian. You well, like top I, I, notch. I was gonna say I can see probably Edge and Christian more because yeah, they and have then, the same rock star personas in a mm-hmm. way. And then you could do you know the Hardy Boys like in their prime versus you know the New Day Kofi and Kofi and Big E or Kofi and Xavier. Oh, it would probably be better if it's the same size. Yeah, I know. So, but hey, Xavier, imagine the spots. I mean, no, you'd imagine a double suplex off the fucking ladder through a table oh. with Big E and the Hardy Boys, you know? So Yeah, that's true. I mean, th- no, Big there's a lot. Big bumps right there. Big bumps. Yeah, th- there's a lot of great tag team matches that we've never... I mean, shit, Kane and Taker versus the Wyatt family. Like, that would have been sick, man. Wait, like, that never happened? I don't think it ever happened. I, I know they had, like, a Brothers, versus, uh, Brothers of Destruction versus uh, maybe... DX in one of the WrestleManias or Crown Jewel? Yeah. I don't remember. The, well, that 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 did happen, but I'm okay. lo- I'm gonna look but up Undertaker and a... Taker versus Wyatt family. Yeah. Um, I want to take that as well. I so guess. they showed up. They apparently the Brothers of Destruction did did I guess they did wrestle against uh, well the Wyatt family at Survivor Series back. back but in was the day. it at their prime? It was, exactly. Nah. Taker already had one replaced hip by then. You know, yeah, Kane was Kane already is, trying to become mayor, you know. So. Kind of building up his size, too. Yeah, but yeah for but, his Republican but, run. <laughs> but, you know, we have, I did say prime. So maybe like late 90s, early 2000s, I think. Well, where, mm-hmm. where would you say? That, around that time, right? I think around that time or even when they first came in, you know, yeah. back in the early 90s, dude. Yeah. Like, that would have been sick versus mm-hmm. the Wyatt family. Mm-hmm. So and then you know That's Harlem true. Heat, Booker T and his brother versus the New Day. I mean, okay, you know, that, that would have been great. That would have been, too, yeah. been good. Mm-hmm. Or you know you've got, fuck, dude. Oh, there I is so one. many. What's I got up? one. I know you're. I don't know. A lot of people are tired of him. King Corbin versus King Booker. Booker. <laughs> and that would be good. The King of Games. All in their primes. 
But I feel I like think... with Booker with Triple H, it's gonna be like SummerSlam of. Uh... Yeah, I Booker and King Corbin is perfect, dude. Yeah, Just them two. Yeah. You know, who's, because Corbin... whose ego is hu- way uh, whose ego oh, is Baron bigger? Corbin. Oh, I... Baron Corbin, one hundred percent. Because Booker T made himself look like an ass, but did a great job doing it and enjoyed I hate, it. Like I said, uh, like uh, like I mentioned before, probably uh, I saw him one time on a Comic Con, and I wanted to go up to him and say, mm-hmm. "I hated you as King Booker. You played an asshole pretty." Damn. Dude, I hated him when I was a kid. And yeah. I still thought the shit was real, dude. I wanted to. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to just oh take the chair. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Shut <laughs> just, the fuck up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the heels back then. I was like, oh, see, yeah. and that's the one funny accent that I I got behind. You know, because the king book it, yeah. act. Yeah, like yeah, that he, shit. I get it. Because you but know, the, it's like a, it's not gonna. Yeah, work. he's the king now. Yeah. You know, so gotta, what do you usually? You know, if if someone's gonna say king, where are you gonna go? You know, England. You know, the monarchs, the mo- yeah, like little, yeah, little homeland the of king, monarchs. Yeah, and also too, dude, when are they gonna take the king off of Corbin? You know, like it's been <laughs> what two years now. I, I mean, I, shouldn't I, there? I heard uh, a lot. He's probably that boring. <laughs> they they could take off the 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 title king to it from him. Yeah, I don't, and I just I liked Baron when he came up. As Baron Corbin and not just King Corbin, I liked his. He, he's his the same guy with, uh, with the hair, right? He the half hair, hair. like yeah. he, his his hairline was all the way back here. Yeah, yeah then I he. I I remember I saw a, a clip of that him winning Money in the Bank, I think. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, I was watching one of the, I think last year or probably two years ago. I was like, what happened to this guy's hair? <laughs> is this the same guy? They say Corbin. Is this his brother or is this him? His I don't twin remember. brother, his evil brother. Like. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember. Is this is this cor is this the same Corbin, or the different Corbin? They don't it, look alike. It, I don't know. Yeah, and you know what's sad is WWE's entrance themes have kind of been not been the greatest, but he had one of the coolest entrance songs. Oh really? And they just screwed it up with the king, the uh, king moniker, and now you know. Maybe one day he'll drop it and go. He back needs to. to. He needs to, but you know, we'll we'll see. He has to drop the king moniker at some point. I was point, about to say, so. how often do they do King of the Ring? Anyway? They're supposed to do it once a week or once a week. I'm a dumbass. No, once a year is what uh, they used to do. But for a long time before Corbin, they didn't do the King of the Ring for like five or six years. Yeah, like it, was it had super, been a really long super time. Super random because, uh, I feel like if I remember correctly, Triple H won before uh, King Booker, right? Or was there one? Oh no, no, no! William no, Regal won one. William yeah. Regal and also Triple H was also before Booker. I'm pretty okay. sure too. Yeah, I I forgot that there was uh one between them. At least. I'm trying to think because I think that Booker was probably he may have been like the last the last one, legit right? Jid King, wasn't yeah. he? I that's yeah. I, I think the, so. That, I think that's what it that's was. That's the last time I. I've seen and it would make sense too movie. because then people it would be really hard for people to one up King Booker you know after that so maybe that's why they kind of shoved okay. it under the rug for a while who knows okay another dream match hmm who has a good oh. mic skill there's a lot of them I mean I'm thinking something I'm trying to think of like because I want to see Mr. Kennedy one more time. I was a I was a huge Mr. Kennedy. No, man. he yeah, you know he's he he was great too, and I mean he made me hate his guts too. So you know that's... that that entrance though, Mister exact the whole spiel <laughs> and then yeah. the longest Kennedy he can say. Oh, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's great, top notch. Yeah, um, you know maybe and you know I'm trying to think because Chris Benoit would have been. That's one match I think that he that I could never stop seeing would be Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero over and over again, over and over Either again. There, you know? Chris Benoit, uh, Rey Mysterio with Eddie Guerrero. That, yeah, I, I, not gonna lie, I feel like oh man, if he didn't sadly pass away, I feel like Eddie would have been great. Oh, dude, you, like, you're talking, you're talking both of them. Like, I know what Chris Benoit did sucks, but the wrestling is what did oh, it to yeah, him. The man, yeah. the man had a brain of an 85 year old man. Yeah, was constantly keeps, doing steroids mm-hmm, and everything. Mm-hmm, but that dude, sucked. there's just he, the Canadians, man. They just they can <laughs> wrestle like fucking crazy, man. Exactly. And I think if they wouldn't have died so young, you know, oh, they would have. They're they Mount Rushmore guys. 
I you feel know, like so. uh, Eddie Guerrero, uh, Chris Benoit would have been great against, uh, I want to say d- probably Dean Ambrose. That would be one. Oh, uh, you know what? That's actually great because they both would love to uh, kill themselves. That's yeah. true. And one well, of them succeeded. No pun, in t- no pun intended, okay? <laughs> like, one of them succeeded. <laughs> yeah, well, he, yeah. Unfortunately, right, unfortunately. I can't believe I said that. Jeez, David. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, well. Um, yeah, it's a little, you know, you know dark uh, humor. Yeah, um, Callisto. I heard that guy is pretty good. I think it was Callisto. He was released today. I think. Trash. Uh, is he really? I don't know. I, he, dude, I, I, I him feel and like Sin Cara, trash. The, all the all the luchadors are not that great except for Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I was supposed to say like no one can like you can't match up. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. I was like nowadays, I feel like having a luchador in. And WWE is just gonna have Rey Mysterio 2.0. Yeah, so and, and they they can and, really top him and, off at like. That. And the and the thing with Rey that gets that gets him over the most is his voice. Yeah, like his voice sounds like you know you kind of like you know this guy sounds a little like exotic like he doesn't sound Hispanic you know he sounds like he could be legitimately like an alien sometimes you know. <laughs> and his his voice is what really sets him apart, and also all the other luchadors like. Like Andrade was a luchador and just can't connect with fans because oh, yeah, that's right. he of the language speak. barrier. Yeah, I hear this one: Andrade and Eddie Guerrero. That's that one that people always say, and they always say that Andrade was the next Eddie Guerrero. But the problem is, can't Eddie Guerrero was born in El Paso, and English was his first language. Yeah, and and he, that lie cheat still. Oh, doing all them low riders every dude, week, a different one. Every, like, yeah, dude. from trucks to a Mustang. To, that was a great to a Caddy, yeah, to a Buick, it, it, to the exactly. Impala, dude. I, just... if, I, if I remember correctly, didn't he, didn't he take JBL's limousine and make it a low rider one time? I'm, I'm, yes, he did. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he did it at one point. Yeah, he did. That yeah. was a great feud, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, was... the text, it wasn't it. It was like a... Texas bull strap match or some shit I, that they I, had. I, oh I my know. god! And <laughs> all I remember is the the promo. Blood everywhere. All I remember is the pro JBL had. Oh, the Mexicans, the yeah. bunch of illegal Mexicans. Yeah, dude. The, oh man, I actually watched it recently. I don't remember about it. I was like, holy fuck, this is. No, this this is not gonna fly. <laughs> no, gonna... you know what's funny, dude? Is like, okay, so they always say that the best WWE characters are their themselves turned up to a hundred, right? JBL is just JBL. Oh, That's yeah, just no, who he is, dude. dude. He's just JBL a complete just, dickhole. Uh, yeah, like. yeah. The, oh, man. I agree with that. Like, looking at yeah. him growing up, I was like, I'm pretty sure this guy has always been the bad guy. You know, yeah, like, and he's always just... And yeah, and learning he, that, you know, he's pretty much of a prick in, behind the scenes. And I a think, bully, like, just... <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what was the line that I loved from that promo? Oh, it's like... Look at it over there. It's a herd of Mexicans. I was like... Uh, a herd of illegal Mexicans. No, he was you just forget like, you. yeah. But pretty yeah. much that's what he was implying. I was like... Yeah, God. no, that's, I think that's what he said, is like the illegal uh, pretty, Mexicans I, or I, some I shit like doubt. that. It's been, yeah. a, it's been a couple of days. But I don't doubt mm-hmm. it. And I'm just like, God damn it. They actually put it in here? Holy fuck. I was just like, I can't believe... This is not going to fly in nowadays. They were... <laughs> Will straight up fucking sue WWE and JBL's ass for and they're yeah. gonna get him canceled straight up. I was like, oh no, thank God that happened back when. Speaking of the 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 like non PC promos, have you ever seen the Mister Fuji the to- choppy choppy or PP thing? No. Have you ever seen that? So apparently there was like a there was a pro, there was a like a segment between Mr. Fuji who is like the 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 Japanese manager guy that wore a top hat super over Asian with the Chu Man Fu and all that. Okay, I think I remember seeing like couple, uh, a couple of old pictures. Yeah, so like there was a there was a segment where he was uh, somebody slept with his wife or something and they literally tied this guy up in the back and he was naked. And he has a sword, and he's like, I choppy, choppy your pee-pee. <laughs> and it's like, really, guys? Like, you can't do that. And you, you could do that back in the day, but, like, they still show it sometimes, and they talk about it, and it's like, guys, come on. Like, this isn't Godzilla, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just... It's over the top. Over the top. 
Okay, here's Huge. another one. Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, versus the Boogeyman. The Boogeyman has worked. I'm coming to get you. Yeah, I'm that's the a... Boogeyman. And I'm coming to get you. Yeah, that. That that could have been. That would uh, be a good one. Uh, yeah, I'm blanking out now. Like. Yeah, we uh, we're, we're pretty I'm much like tired as hell, and yeah, we're, we're kind we're of gone through pre- everything. Yeah, pretty much like present, pre- uh, present, past, and future. I guess stars. the only one we didn't touch on was Hulk Hogan versus John Cena, but everybody knows that's that's another I, dream match that everybody wanted to see. I found the like my dream match was John Cena and The Rock, and they delivered, in my opinion. The Rock versus Hulk Hogan that was good too. You know, I, I, I watched that. I was like, damn, Hulk Hogan gets it. <laughs> and, of course, later, you know, if we ever get a Hulk Hogan versus John Cena, I'm pretty sure Hogan is not going to let John Cena go, get over him. Right. They'll be with their walker and their wheelchair. <laughs> exactly. And somehow he'll still drop the leg in one, two, three. You know, Scott Hogan Hall. must win. <laughs> Scott Hall is Kevin Nash from randomly appear out of nowhere. On life support <laughs> with still a toothpick in his mouth, you know. <laughs> like, he hit people. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, hey, dude, just, just, just go home, dude. You're old. <laughs> dude, out of all of them, Kevin Nash is the one that looks the best. Follow, yeah. Out of out of the main three, Scott Hall was the worst. <laughs> like, age got him bad. Well, and I mean, Kevin Nash, though, well, and Scott Hall was also drugs and alcohol, oh, okay. too. So I didn't know about that one. But with uh, Kevin, Kevin Nash, dude, his body is just fuck, though, dude. He's had, like... He's had more torn quads than Vince McMahon and Triple H combined. He's had double knee replacement surgery. I heard he had a match with torn quads or something like that back in. The- uh, yeah, I think I think it was something like that or one torn quad yeah, or something one- like that. But yes, I remember people were like, oh, at least it wasn't like Kevin Nash, you know, had to wrestle through. Uh, torn quad. Well, fuck, dude. I tore my quad like six months or a year ago, and dude, that Jeez. shit hurts. I couldn't even walk for like I two bet. weeks. So you know. I, I, you know what? It, now you say that, dude. Kudos to Vince McMahon to walk him back <laughs> after <laughs> after tearing both of them. <laughs> the most, one of the most iconic uh, WWE scenes ever is that fucker like screaming, like, oh, he was, looking up. Ah, ah, he was straight up angry. Out of his mouth. He yeah. was straight up angry, walking down the uh, the the, uh, the ramp, and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden he slides in, strikes stab up. <laughs> don't do steroids kids because that's what happens your body d- destroys itself exactly you know, so. but hey I, yeah. apparently he can he still gets it uh recently after i forgot what it was i don't remember what kind of weight training it was but he, apparently he he broke his uh he did a, a a personal record or something which is cool, you know, for for a guy his age, that was pretty cool. But yes, steroids yeah. probably played a part in it. And the Illuminati, so uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> knowing him, he'll probably live forever. But reptilian, super frail, <laughs> you super never frail. see his eyes, you know. So. <laughs> super frail. Stephanie yeah. is running the company. Shane is already on you know, life support because his bones are giving out from all the bumps he took over the years in WrestleMania. But Shane's shoe game is top notch, though, dude. Every year his shoes are fucking sick, man. So I even when I was a kid, I was like, "Damn, this guy, this guy has style." I like. That. Oh, when I, when I was a kid, dude, I loved Shane O'Mac when I was a kid, man. And oh, then when yeah. he like bought when he bought WCW, I was like, "Fuck yeah, Shane O'Mac, dude!" And now it's like, "Oh fuck, Shane O'Mac." It's just you so know? often now. Like if you sprinkle yeah. him every now and then, you'll probably people will probably get invested yeah. again, but. Like like you said, he's like in every WrestleMania now since he came back. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Tacos. That's and, a signal. Yeah, tacos <laughs> and everything just came, just decided to bubble up in me. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we pretty much like squeezed out this topic. You know, the dream matches, the WrestleMania, uh, my technical difficulties. <laughs> You the know, best part of the show, exactly, probably. Exactly, <laughs> because my camera keeps disappearing and then coming back, and now we're back here. At least it's working. That's all that matters. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, you got any more uh, things you want to talk about or? 
No, I'm pretty much good for this one, dude. Yeah. I think we touched we touched on everything. Yeah, that, pretty that, much. And more. Yeah, pretty so. much the dream match was my question. I probably had more, but uh, but anyway, I I want to kind of do this like pre uh, pre pay per view and post pay per view. So next up will probably be I'm assuming backlash. Yeah, backlash is backlash next. is next, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. Backlash will be next, so uh, I have no idea when that is. I'm assuming May something. It's probably yeah. It's probably gonna be like a month or five weeks after WrestleMania, maybe six weeks after WrestleMania. Is, let me see. Okay, maybe yeah. Maybe the eighth or the fifteenth. Yeah, I definitely would watch that. Um, because one, I definitely want to see how they want to end. Certain feuds that you know they left in an open ending and ended for WrestleMania, even though right, I've always believed WrestleMania was the paper should be the end, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where where they start new storylines, uh, clean up the old ones. Sure, you can have like the raw after Mania, but that's where it's like a kind of a let's phase this feud into another one, exactly. Uh, it doesn't work that way anymore, though, yeah. Which, it's just because, like we talked about, the re- the revenue for pay per views just isn't there anymore. So they don't have the incentive to scrap everything and start from scratch, and they don't have the talent in the writing room either. So okay. I have uh, one last question before we head out. What did you think about uh, the two night uh, WrestleMania and two nights versus one night? What do you think about that one? Do you think they ten should hours stay- or ten or eight hours of wrestling is a lot? Yeah. You know, and I mean, as we saw, night two kind of sputtered halfway through. It kind of wasn't as good. Like, yeah, you know, you like had night the, one straight up stole the show. Yeah, like you had Roman, the Roman and D. Bryan and Edge match, but the rest of it was kind of like just kind of thrown together. You know, yeah, and I think sure. you know it was gr- it's it was great during the pandemic when they had no fans because nobody had anything better to do. Fuck yeah, ten hours of wrestling, I'm in. You know. But going forward, I think they really need to stick with like the one bit, one night, four or five hours. Yeah, one that's night. what uh, that's what I heard as well today. Like, like the two nights thing is just temporary, you know, because like you said, it was the pandemic, so they had to provide last year and this year. I'm assuming they only did it two nights because. They weren't sure if they're going to have live audience in time. Right, and, and I think they that they also wanted to maximize live. that revenue, too, yeah. from the live audience. Yeah, especially and, since it's going to be this big event now. And right, and if an you think about event. it, too, you got SmackDown Friday, you had WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday, you've got Raw Monday, and then NXT was on Tuesday. So you've got seven, you've got like, thir- five days. Like, like 13, 14 hours of wrestling over five days. Like, that's just a little too much, yeah. you know? So, but we'll see what happens. I personally think Raw needs to go back to two hours, but, you know. Oh, well, well, how many hours is Raw at the moment? It's three hours, dude. Oh, really? I it's thought it's been seven to ten. I thought it's seven been to ten. three hours. It's been three hours for a long time, and it's been three hours for too long of a time. In my like, opinion, like it's... how long? Because I remember uh, around two thousand eight, it was it was three hours still. It's been about ten years, twelve years, probably. So that makes sense. okay. That's and I'm well, no, actually, dude, no, I'm tripping, man. Okay, so it's probably been three hours since the Monday Night Wars. Oh, okay, but. Okay. I think that's too much because they put too much filler in the raw episodes, and it becomes more just, just trying to wait like tre- tread water getting through the episode. Yeah, you know? trying to what? Let's throw this start and see which one, what storyline will stick to the wall. And so exactly, and like exactly. you said, a bunch of filler. Well, in a way, yeah. I I pretty much took up most of your time now. It's almost <laughs> it's a pretty much eleven p.m. at our time. Um, of course, uh, we're like an hour and forty, I believe. I don't. Uh, yeah, probably an hour and forty total. Uh, I can't really tell because I cut it half <laughs> like quarter through to check if I have audio or not. But anyway, David, thank you once again for doing this for with me, not just for me, but with me. And it's of like it's, like I said last week, it's great to always like to have someone to talk about wrestling with. Like, something I didn't really had back when I was a kid. And plus, you know, nowadays I can watch pay-per-views or, you know, event main events and such. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, it's, it's my cool. pleasure. 
as compared to back then. And uh, hell yeah, man. Next up will be Backlash. Same process. Our our predictions and then our our uh, post uh, what was it post main event thoughts I guess. And uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, for the hundred and fiftieth time, thank you for joining. Nate, me thank for you, tonight. dude. And uh, I'll see you guys later. All right, bro. Peace. Catch you later, man.